collaborate better with our municipal colleagues. Um, you know, we need to make sure that we're collaborating with the local level to identify those local needs. We should never have had to consider this without those stops. Um, and I guess, you know, following up on what Kirsten said a little bit, I think that we need transit stations that are intentionally designed, not just to support, but to encourage residents to walk or to bike or to skateboard or whatever um, as a way to safely move across the west end of our city. And that means more investment in infrastructure projects and in, like, including the Western Rail Path. But most importantly, I think our community needs an ally at Queen's Park um, who's going to move beyond the backbench and show some leadership in making sure that when those projects come to us, right from the beginning, community need and community benefit are on the table. Thank you. I think we all know that we have a significant problem with uh, our public transit. Um, it impacts the way that you drive, it impacts that how you get back into the city. I don't know if anybody's aware, or if you're all aware, uh, that uh, for similarly sized cities, we, we have the longest commute in North America and the shortest distance. I remember hearing that on the radio while stuck in traffic about 10 years ago, and things have not changed under the liberal 15 year rule. Things have actually gotten worse. All they do is promise, all they do is make plans, and then they delay those plans. You know, just a few examples. They said in the 2014 election that they would, there would be a Niagara Go service that would come in uh, 2015, but there's still no two-way all-day service to Niagara. Uh, they promised two-way two all-day Go service to Kitchener-Waterloo by 2019, but now they're saying it's going to be 2024. 20, um, you know, the cost of setting up Presto, which I, I think is probably a solution that Kristen was talking about, um, for the TTC, it's expected to cost the province 50% more than what they had planned. And the Liberals built, I don't know if you all remember, when, we, when they first built the UP Express, which I love, I think it's great, but they originally built it as a, as a luxury train. And they spent four and a half million dollars on luxury touches. And uh, it was $27.50 each way. You know, totally unaffordable for two people. You may as well take a cab. So these were later changed to what they had to drop the price and subsidize each individual passenger. These are the kind of promises that you get from the Liberals. These are the kind of follow through that you get from the Liberals. PC government can actually get these essential projects done on time and on budget. And those are the things that, uh, that we can bring to you. Real change is coming and, and we will bring relief to the people. Great. So thank you. So um, as was, was said earlier, that's right, we have uh, 12 new stations that uh, are part of the regional express rail that are coming to, to the city in GTHA. And we have two of those right here in Davenport. So one of them is the one at Caledonia and uh, Eglinton that will connect to the Crosslink, as well as the one at Lansdowne and Bloor. And I'm very proud of the advocates in our community that uh, advocated for that station and I'm very proud that through the discussions that I had in really basically knocking the Ministry of Transportation over the head on that ask that we were able to announce back in June of 2016 that we were going to get a GO station at Lansdowne and Bloor. So I want to thank the community that advocated as well for that uh, and pushed for that station and that we continue to make the, uh, the community better and being able to serve the community better. Uh, the bike share, the, the rings that Kristen spoke about, that is part of the commitment of the government. We announced right here in Davenport at Sweet Peas, $90, mil, uh, $90 million in cycling infrastructure to the City of Toronto to be able to uh, afford them the uh, opportunity and the possibility to invest in many projects, many of them here, right here in Davenport. Uh, so we have uh, six smart stations as well coming to the, uh, coming as a result of um, uh, RER. And I just want to uh, comment, I think, on Kristen's point where she said that she had to pay all these different fares. So one of the things that we have committed in our uh, budget is that we are looking at integrated fares. We're already going to uh, have $3 within a 10 kilometer radi radius regardless of what type of transit you use. It's interesting what the, my PC colleague here said with regards to investments in transit. If you all remember privatization of the 407 as well as the crosslink. There was a trench, there was a hole. And what did they do when they came into power? They filled it up with concrete. So all this, uh, all this transit, all this congestion that we're suffering has really been a result of the in, uh, in investments backed by the PC government. Thank you.